All right, let's jump into the heart of this example, uh, the stuff that makes DOM scripting work. So the first thing I want to look at is this function here. It's in the document object, so that's why we go document dot get element by ID. You notice how I go get capital E, capital B, capital I. This is important that it's done this way, otherwise it will not be read by the browser. Hello. Hey, how you doing? No, no, I'm just recording uh, another video here. The JavaScript course. Yeah, yeah, we're getting into DOM stuff now. What, what, what's going on? Really? When does this happen? Why, why do you do that? Are you serious? Are you serious? That Wow. All right, listen, I, I, I okay, mm-hmm, yeah, you know what, I'm going to have to call you back, this is, uh, that's pretty freaky stuff, wow, okay, listen, I'm going to have to call you back, I'm, I'm doing this video on JavaScript here, and I don't want to keep the people waiting, all right, all right, all right, all right, yep, 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 okay, Sorry about that, guys. I you know, just had to take that call. Okay, so in this video, what we're going to learn is the get elements by ID function, and we're going to learn inner HTML. So these are uh, two very important tools in the JavaScript arsenal. So let's uh, let's uh, let's start with the get elements by ID. Now it's in the document object, so we do you know document dot get elements by ID, of course. So what does get elements by ID do? Well, we know it's a function because we got our curly braces. This simply gives us a hook on a handle. It allows us to basically jump to a particular object or actually a particular tag on the page. So if we look at this, we go get document dot get element by ID. When you see in double quotes, menu dash item. So what I'm doing, I'm saying, okay, let's get the ID, the tag, but has an ID of menu oh, down here, excuse me, menu dash items. So it's a really fast way, a fast track way to jump and grab a hold of that item. So once we get a hold of it, then I stuff that reference in a paragraph. So think of it as like a handle again. We got a handle on this particular tag with the ID of menu items. In this case, it's a paragraph, although it could be any tag as long as it has this particular ID. So that's pretty good. So we also declare a second variable, and that's product underscore list. And we basically say that this variable here is filled with the results of this function, list underscore products. So if we look up list underscore products. So essentially, we're populating product underscore list with this return item here. We discussed that before. So now we got our two variables established. And so we got our handle on our particular ID, or in this case, the paragraph, and we got our products underscore list variable populated with, uh, with this value up here. So, which is, you know, this list of items. So if we go back here, here's, here it is, here it is. Now we go paragraph reference to this, right? Dot inner HTML. So what does inner HTML do? Inner HTML allows you to insert text and HTML into any spot on the page. So inner HTML, think about it, it's kind of intuitive. It's anything in between this paragraph tag and the closing tag. So you can shove all kinds of stuff in between here, right? So we're saying paragraph, we're identifying this paragraph here, and we're saying add the HTML product list. Now it doesn't have to be HTML. Inner HTML can just shove in text if we want, but in our case, we're shoving in what's we built up here, which is returned in here. So we're shoving some text and a little bit of HTML as well. So we're saying in this function, shove in text and HTML that we've stored in product list in between this particular paragraph here, which well, we get a hold of this paragraph using the document.getID 
excuse me, document dot get elements by ID rather, and we're shoving into this thing. And then of course we we discussed this before, right? We're turning the on off variable to on, and if we go to our else, we're doing the exact same thing, except the second thing we're saying product list is equal to nothing, so we're emptying it out, and then we're adding this to the inner HTML. So essentially we're just removing whatever it was in there and then we're resetting our variable again does that make sense let's take a look at the code in action hopefully looking at the code in action will make things a little bit more clear so now we click and we fire off our first statement so we're populating the product excuse me the paragraph with the product list and then in the second one since this now on off is on menu is on we're in the second case when we click again we're going to say whatever's in between the paragraph tag populate with whatever's in product list which is nothing so we just click it again and you see it clears out again kind of cool so with just this very simple bit of code here we've created a drop down menu and uh, yeah it looks pretty good right so now it's just a list of items here. To make this into a menu of clickable items, we can just change up the code just a little bit. So we go up here, and we change it up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a an href here. Now we can put whatever we want in here. If we were getting more complex, we could actually derive these values from the database as well. But we won't here for now. We're just going to leave it blank for the sake of our demo. And we're going to put in the closing href. Notice I use single quotes, right? Because remember in JavaScript, if you have double quotes on the outside, you have to use single quotes on the inside. So I can put in whatever I'll put in www.killersites.com. So let's see what that looks like in the page. I'll refresh. So now they're all links all of a sudden, right? Now if I click on a link, doesn't take us to where we want to go because I didn't put HTTP in front. So just for the sake of uh, being complete. All right, let's refresh that. There we go, that'll take us to where we want to go. So as you can see, action script error, continue. But that has nothing to do with our code. I just, a little bug just occurred on, uh, on killersites.com, but uh, what are you going to do? Anyhow, so there you go. So we've just so a little bit of change in our code. We've turned our list of text into actual list of links. Now, this is very basic, I understand. But what you can do now is you can use CSS and you can style this up to look like a real menu. One last thing about the rock code. If you look on this paragraph here with the idea of menu title, I've uh, added the onClick event handler to call the insert text function, which is, uh, we declared this up here. And that's uh, pretty much it. So what should you take away from this particular video? Number one, understand how I use the variable on off to create a toggle switch. Notice how I declared this variable globally so that we can maintain its value outside the firing of the function. Let me demonstrate that because if I declared a variable in here, it would not work. And I'll show you one way to show you. So I'm going to refresh this. But it won't close. Now I'm clicking, it won't close again. And the reason it won't close is because since the variable is now declared in here, whenever this function is called, it's always going to be set to off, right? Var on off is off. So what we need to do is we need to declare it outside the function in the global space, right? And I hope you remember what I mean by global space, meaning all other functions can now access this variable. But since it's declared out of here, when this function is called, this variable is not going to be reset unless we specifically tell it to within our if, right? We do it here and we do it here. So understand that this is a basic toggle menu strategy that you see used all the time. But when it comes to DOM scripting, the key thing to remember is this function here get element by id now remember it's not elements because there's a function called get elements by id which we're not going to cover here and remember the case does make a difference 
and you do have to start with document because it's a function within the document object that we've looked at before. So document.getElementById, and then we name our element between our, uh, our quotes here. The next big thing you want to recognize is the inner HTML property, what allows us to insert text and HTML in between any tags that we want. There are other ways to do this that are more precise in DOM scripting, but this is a nice, quick and easy, dirty way of doing it.